There are a lot of houses on the market, all priced to sell, or are they? How do you know you're not overpaying for the house you wish to purchase? Overpaying, it's The Real Estate Show. Welcome to The Real Estate Show. My name's Rick Naples. I am the broker of Zone Realty LLC. You zone your home. Overpaying. It's a concern that's on every buyer's mind. You're looking at houses and you're out there with your realtor and you're deciding on what home is going to fit your needs. The home you're going to buy. Well, how are you sure that you're not going to overpay to purchase that house. There's all kinds of information that's out there. Now, of course, a house that comes on the market has its asking price. That's the price that you see in the newspaper ads, that you see in the ads online, that the realtor is marketing for. That's the price of the house. But is that price an accurate price? Is it too high? Is it fair? Do you make an offer at that price or do you make an offer lower? And if you do make an offer and it's accepted, how do you feel that you have not overpaid for that particular home? Well, let's look at pricing. There's three different ways that a house is priced and it's really important to understand how that price came up with or how they came up with that price. First of all, a realtor meets with a seller and presents what they call a market analysis. Now that market analysis basically looks at homes that are like the home that's going to be up for sale and what those houses have sold for and what they've actually closed for. Based on that statistical information, the seller and the realtor decide on a price to put the house on the market for. That's one way. Another way it happens is sometimes you get a realtor that's a little overzealous and just wants to get the listing and will just accept whatever number the seller says they want to sell the house for. Whether it's a high number or a low number, this is what the seller wants to sell the house for, so that's what they list it for. But again, is that a fair price for that particular house? A third way is hiring a professional appraiser. Now, an appraiser comes out and does an appraisal on the home and looks at all the comparisons that are out there and does all the analysis and all the great work that appraisers do, and he comes up with a value. But is that number the right number for the sales price of the home? Maybe, maybe not. You have to remember that appraisers are not only setting a value, but the main reason why they're setting that value is to justify a bank's risk to put a finance contract on that home, a mortgage. So do you trust the realtor's analysis? Do you trust what the seller wants for the house? Do you trust what the appraiser said the house's value is? I mean, how do you know? When you're out there and you're looking at homes and you're looking at the price of homes, there's a lot of things to consider. And this is why it's so important to take the time to step back. You have to be careful of your emotions because a lot of times you get very excited when you go into a house and it just seems like it fits every need that you have and you want to buy that house. There's also a phenomenon that happens at open houses. Let's say there's a house in a very popular neighborhood in a great location and the realtors are doing an open house and you go and you see there's a lot of people at that open house, a lot of traffic to that open house. Maybe you're going to try and put an offer in and you want to make sure you beat anybody else that puts an offer in so you put it in high, trying to hedge your bet, you might say, in getting that house. That's a caution. You might be in your emotional overzealousness offering a little bit too much for that house. 
you got to remember, no matter what the price of the house is, and this is assuming that the house has been priced based on its condition and all the other factors that get involved, the house has to appraise. In other words, if you're getting a mortgage and you're not buying for cash, the bank's appraiser has to make sure that that house has the value for the bank to put the mortgage on it, depending on what kind of mortgage program you're in. One of the easiest ways to prevent overpaying for a house is like I've said many times here on the real estate show and that's working with a professional realtor. Your buyer's agent or the realtor that's representing you as the buyer is going to advise and counsel you as far as what's going on in a market or neighborhood as far as pricing. Now your realtor can't tell you in exact words this is what you need to offer for the house. That's up to you. You are the one that's making the buying decision. You are the one that's spending the money. The realtor, however, can give you the statistics that you need in order to make a fair offer based on what you feel you're willing to pay for the house. Then, of course, it's up to the seller whether or not they're going to accept that offer or not. I put together a presentation that just gives some hints on overpaying. Let's take a look. I'm talking here on The Real Estate Show about the possibilities of overpaying for a house. It's got to be a concern, you know, especially for the first-time buyer that's out there. You're looking to purchase your very first property, and you want to make sure that you're getting a fair value for what you're purchasing, that you're going to make an offer that the seller is going to accept, that the bank is going to appraise the home for, and everything's going to be great and you're going to get to the closing and move into your house with the confidence that you paid the right price for it, that you didn't pay too much. So like I said, there's a lot of factors that go into this whole idea of not overpaying when it comes to purchasing a house. Now some buyers will do a lot of groundwork themselves. They'll look on the internet, which is we know one of the biggest popular ways that buyers search for homes. 
And they do comparisons and they do analysis and they look at this house compared to that house. And this, this house has three bedrooms and one bath compared to this house with three bedrooms and a bath and a half. This one has a garage. This one doesn't. This one's on a half acre lot. This one's on an acre lot. And they look at all the pricing and they come up in their own minds of what they feel they might want to offer on a house they want to purchase. And of course, it's based on what they've qualified for in order to get the mortgage that they need to, their pre-qualification letter. The problem is, is a lot of these analyticals that are out there on websites don't take into account the specific home you're looking to buy. It's just looking at statistics and numbers. And this is where experience comes in. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to go out and look at houses when you're ready to buy and go out with someone that gets involved in purchase and sales of homes as a living? Well, that's a realtor. That's a professional. That's someone who does this for a living. And they can help advise and counsel you when it comes time for you to make the offer. And as I said, your realtor is not going to tell you, well, offer this amount of money. They're not to do that. They're going to advise you, they're going to counsel you, and you're going to make your own decision. But they're also going to look at all those statistics that you've gathered and statistics they gather on their own, and they're going to add a very valuable tool that you as a first-time buyer or sometimes even a seasoned buyer may not have, and that's their experience. They also know, based on record, what houses in the area are selling and closing for and what the most successful offers are when they're made on homes. Just basically because they've done it several times. Let's take a look at this little video I put together. I'll be back to talk about more as far as overpaying. So what if you're looking at homes that are for sale and you find the one that you want to purchase and it just happens to be what we call a hot property. It's a property that's getting a lot of attention, maybe something that's in the neighborhood that's unique or something that a lot of buyers would like to buy and own. So you get into what's called a bidding war. Well, how do you know when to quit? When do you know that as you're making these offers on this house, how much is too much? I mean, when do you stop? Well, as I said earlier, you have to kind of put your emotions aside and you have to also be very careful that you don't get caught up in the excitement of bidding on a home. You want to make sure that you're looking at your numbers, that first of all, the house is affordable to you, and you have to have a secret. And that secret is you have to be willing to walk away. In other words, here's my final offer. If you take it, great. If you don't, I'm out. So as I said, it's really difficult. Rely on your realtor for their counseling and try to not get yourself in a situation where your excitement may make you overpay. Let's look at this quick little presentation. I'll be back with some other thoughts about overpaying.
You know, there's a thing called an afterthought, or when it comes to making a purchase, it's the idea of what they call buyer's remorse. It's when you buy something and then after you've purchased it, you think about it and you think, gee, why did I pay that much money for that item? Or I shouldn't have paid that much money for that item. And you know in your heart, or you have the feeling that you overpaid. You weren't confident in the purchase that you made. And this is happening after the fact. You want to try to prevent that before it happens. Again, by looking at all the information that you could have in front of you. And that goes to not only purchasing a house, but it also goes to other things. Have you ever gotten a bill for some medical services and been stunned at the amount of money that's being charged? Have you ever gotten a quote from a roofer or a plumber or an electrician and said to yourself, wow, I'm not going to pay that kind of money for that kind of service. This is why you shop around. And this becomes really important also when you're working with a realtor and you're looking at houses. You shop around. You look at the way the houses are priced to the market so that you don't fall into that trap of overpaying. You want to make sure that you get value for your purchase. You also, when it comes to a home, have to consider something that sometimes you don't really consider with other types of purchases, and that's resale value. Are you going to be able to get back what you've purchased for this home in the future when you decide to sell it? Now, of course, there's a lot of factors that go into that, and I'm not going to say there's guarantees that your housing value will go up, but if you do look at the history and the statistics of home sales, housing prices have always increased. Depends on how long you're in the house and, of course, what you've done to it. I put together a presentation that talks about paying for services in comparison and whether or not you're overpaying. Let's take a look. There's an old saying out there that says, knowledge is power. The more knowledge you have about a specific thing, the better you're going to be in the long run. Let's say you're an investor and you're investing in the stock market. You're going to do a lot of research on what stocks are a good risk for you to buy that hopefully go up in value. If you need a major job done around the house, plumbing, electrical, remodeling, whatever it might be, you're going to spend the time to research those people that are out there that do that kind of work 
and what the quality of work they've done, what their pricing ranges are, and so on and so forth. If you decide to get a degree, an educational degree, you're going to go to college. Well, that's going to cost you tuition money, and you're going to pay to gain that knowledge. The only knowledge you really gain that doesn't cost you anything is knowledge of experience in life, and that you only get as you live it. But you kind of pay for that too if you think about it. Knowledge is very, very important when it comes to making a purchase of a home, but also for selling a home. And this is the main thing that you're paying for when you hire a realtor. You're paying for their knowledge. They're the ones that have gone to school, practiced real estate, and they've gone through the continuing education courses and the continuing education to constantly keep their skills up to date to be able to help you to purchase the home that you want to purchase. So rely on them. Let's take a final look at this presentation I put together about knowledge and then I'll be back with a section of the show I call the Real Estate Mailbag. This is the part of the show I call the Real Estate Mailbag. It's my opportunity to address questions that are sent to me here at the Real Estate Show or just asked to me in general conversation when I'm out and about just talking to folks about real estate. And how do you really know that what you're purchasing, you're not paying too much for it? The best advice is don't get so emotionally involved that you end up throwing money out that wasn't necessary to throw out. My name is Rick Naples. This has been The Real Estate Show. I thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.